Hi, this is Tom Johnson again, your online instructor for Grace College of Divinity's homiletics course, CLG 410. In this first session with you today, I want to just take a few minutes to share a couple of principles with you and talk about the importance of the videos that I've selected for this week's session. I want to begin by reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. And this is the story of the Lord Jesus as He begins His ministry. And the reason I've chosen this passage will become apparent in just a moment. But listen to this in light of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, listen. And the book of the prophets of Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book, unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because... He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed and downtrodden, and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the eyes in the synagogue were fixed upon him, and he began to say, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Notice for just a moment that Jesus said some very critical things here. First of all, he said, quoting Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The very first thing I want you to understand about preaching is that this is not just communication. It is that. But at the very heart of what we're doing, is we're communicating the heart of God to the people of God. Your message, the proclamation, the preaching of His Word could be the only time that they hear and can relate to what God is saying to them through His Word and by His Spirit. Lord Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, and He has anointed me to preach, to proclaim. The second thing I want you to realize is that the anointing of God's Spirit is absolutely imperative. It is, it's not something that you can put on the shelf or take for granted. The anointing of God's Spirit, the, the empowerment of God's Spirit in your life, which comes through, first, a personal relationship with Him, of course. Second, continual communion with Him, which comes by daily prayer and Bible reading and fellowshipping with the body of Christ. It comes from Allowing God to uh, let His Word work in you to, to cut those channels of grace into your own spirit and soul so that He is speaking to you and that you become His proclaimer, His watchman, if you will, speaking what God's heart is, speaking what God's purpose is to the people that you're addressing. So Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me and He has anointed me to preach, to proclaim, to declare. So your preaching ministry is the same as that of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were to read the Gospels, and I know that you already have, you'll discover that wherever he went, he was preaching, he was proclaiming. He was not moved by what people were saying about him. He was not moved by their acceptance or their rejection. He preached the Word of God faithfully, and he preached it out of his understanding of the text, he preached it out of his understanding of the heart of God for his people. And that's exactly what we anticipate that you will do as well. So I want to remind you that preaching the Word of God begins on your knees. It begins with your Bible. It begins with God working in you and through you to effectively move his people onto his plan. All right? Today, I've chosen for you to... Uh, seminar sessions that were presented by uh, the Acts 29 Church Network. It's from their resurgent conference back in 2009, and even though that's a little bit dated, the material is very fresh and very, very relevant for you and I. I've selected a, a sermon by Pastor Mark Driscoll that's entitled Putting the Preacher in His Place. I really appreciated this message. I want you to understand, first of all, that this message, along with Matt Chandler's message, uh, it's preached to probably a thousand preachers. It's not a Sunday morning session. It's not 
timed in the same way that we would time a Sunday morning session. Uh, but this is strong meat for men who are called to preach God's Word. And he speaks about issues that, that deal with the, the responsibility of preaching, the place that a pastor and a preacher has in the life of the church and in the life of other believers. I want to encourage you as you listen to this message to take notes. It's very important for the exercise which will come after this. Uh, I believe you're going to hear things that are going to probably make you laugh, some things that will make you think introspectively, and hopefully some things that will provoke change in your heart and life. The second message that I've chosen for you is, was preached by Matt Chandler in the same conference, and this is entitled, The Call to Preach, and he really deals with preaching and it, the element of preaching, the practice of preaching, and how that uh, is effective, uh, or is, how God uses that in the ministry uh, of proclaiming His Word to people. Uh, he'll take you from uh, Genesis to Revelation in a, in a very quick way and demonstrating to you just how important the proclamation of the Word is, and in fact will bring you to the conclusion that God has ordained preaching, the preaching of the Word, for uh, the salvation of men, and that He really hasn't ordained any other any other way. So while God will use music and he'll certainly use movies and videos and all other kinds of dramas and, and uh, reenactments, etc., it is the preaching of the word that God has ordained according to the Apostle Paul that brings conviction to the heart and transformation uh, to the life. So we're preaching for changed lives. We're preaching for God uh, to, to speak God's word to people's hearts. So these two individuals have, have produced two very uh, strong sermons that I believe will help you, they'll encourage you, they'll challenge you. At the end of those two sermons this week, I want you to take just a few moments and I want you to write for me a two to three page essay. Now this is your first writing experience with me and so I want you to pay a lot of attention to grammar and punctuation and all the things that make for a good paper. Believe me, communication has got to be, um, it's got to be done correctly. You're not just going to be preaching all the time. You'll also be uh, writing and, and even when you're speaking you want to use the correct grammar and uh, it's important to exercise yourself that way. Uh, this is not a text, it's not a blog, it's not, you know, it's not a Facebook encounter. This is a, a, a written assignment that I want you to share with me and entitle it, My Call to Preach. In this um, essay, I'd like you to talk about three or four things. First of all, I'd like you to talk about your personal call. How is it that you know that God called you to preach? What is it that has convinced you that, that uh, being in the ministry is more than just living the message? Of course, we all are called to do that. We're all called to preach the gospel through our lives, but to be a public proclaimer of God's Word, to stand in the pulpit to publicly teach and preach God's Word uh, to help people understand what God's called them to do. The reason I'm asking you to do that is because throughout your ministry you're going to encounter challenges. Uh, there are going to be opportunities for you to, to adjust what you do in order to fit uh, the, the, the context that you're actually delivering that message in. And that, of course, is an important factor of preaching. However, you must understand and know what it is that God's called you to do so that you don't become something God's not called you to be. I hope that makes sense to you. Secondly, I'd like you to talk about some of the conviction that God has uh, already worked into your heart. Some of the things that Driscoll and, and uh, Chandler will address will certainly uh, remind you of some of those convictions, perhaps even cause you to dig deeper uh, into these areas and, and perhaps provoke you to, to embrace new convictions as well. And uh, this is really important because no matter where you're preaching, you're going to be faced with the challenge of uh, adjusting your message and context, uh, or adjusting your message to the context in which you're preaching. And it's very, very much uh, uh, necessary to understand that our mission is to preach the Word of God. It's not to preach just social messages, it's not to, uh, it's not to preach the latest fad, and it's not to adjust to be socially correct or politically correct. There is an aspect of preaching God's Word, His truth, proclaiming God's principle that is uh, very vital to us today. And, and of course, pulpits are being 
challenged all the time in how we or what we present within the gospel context. And so I want you to talk about the convictions. You need to know what hills you're willing to die on, what, what principles you're going to stand and live by, so that before you encounter those, you will already have an understanding that you're not going to live by convenience, but by conviction. All right. Thirdly, I want you to talk about some of the concerns you have. Listen, when I was called, when God called me to preach the gospel, I was 10 years old. But by the time I was graduating high school, my first public uh, address, my first attempt at public communication was so terrible that the, the, the teacher, though she passed me, encouraged me to seek some other form of vocation for my life. And so that kind of haunted me for a long, long time. And when I began to realize that my, my call, the vocation of God, to take the gospel to the nations of the earth was going to require that I speak publicly, well, I've got to be honest, it really struck my heart with fear. And uh, I had to work through those personal fears in order to achieve or in order to succeed at what God called me to do. My first sermons, in fact, were preached to thousands. I've got to be honest. I would often walk out into the, the, to the forest and just preach to the trees. And, you know, the Bible says the trees will clap their hands. And I don't know if they did or not, but they certainly were attentive for me. They all stood straight and, and uh, responded in the way I hoped they would in my mind. But it gave me an opportunity to work through some of those issues that you're going to work through uh, during these sermon presentations that you'll be making. It helped me to find my voice and to find my style of preaching. Of course, that morphed and changed over the time, but it was a very valuable exercise for me. So as you write this paper, I want you to cover some of these issues. I want you to address them. Be honest with yourself and be honest with me. This is not a disqualifying uh, factor for you. This is helping you to develop the spiritual formation necessary to build your conviction and to build uh, the resources inwardly to become the preacher God's called you to be, to effectively and faithfully deliver God's Word. Let me pray with you now as you prepare to listen to Mark, uh, Mark Driscoll and Matt Chandler. Prepare your hearts as you listen to their sermons because I believe they're going to impact you deeply and uh, transform you forever. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the opportunity to invest in these men and women. I thank you, Lord, that you've called them and chosen them to serve your people and to proclaim your word. I pray that over the course of this next 16 weeks that you would impart to them the principles necessary to become effective and faithful proclaimers of your message. Lord, I ask you to release your Holy Spirit in a fresh dimension today, that as we watch these videos and listen to the messages that are being preached, that we would not discount them because they're, they've been passed, or we would not look at the style or listen to the content and judge it based on what we've experienced, but rather we would allow the Holy Spirit to pierce our heart. Speak to us, Lord. Help us to hear the meat of the Word. Help us to be challenged, to grapple, to wrestle with you in such a way that, God, we would be impacted and transformed, prepared, to become powerful preachers with effective ministries of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for that now, in Jesus' name. And I want to thank you for the lives that are going to be touched by these men and women as they faithfully and rightly divide your word and preach the gospel to the masses in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you.